These are the country highlights of the Netherlands and the comparison to the US. So for the United States, um, the United States has a population of 331 million and it is one of the largest countries in terms of land size and compare that to the Netherlands it uh, its land size is pretty small uh, its population is still a little bit sizable though it is 17 point 41 million and uh, its primary language is Dutch and the U United States' uh, primary language is English and just some facts about the Netherlands it is one of the most densely populated countries in the world so going back to its land size and population 17 million plus is still a pretty big amount for the size that uh, the Netherlands is with its geography. It's it's um it's really packed in in their country, and um things it's known for is its museums and its art and artists. Um, actually Vermeer, if you guys know him, or even uh, Van Gogh, they were actually both from this country. And um, other things they're known for also are bicycles and athleticism because a lot of uh, their citizens do bike, swim, or do some sort of uh, physical activity. Since we are experiencing a global pandemic, the CDC strongly advises that individuals reconsider any traveling. But if you must travel at the moment, please follow all health recommendations such as wearing a mask and, tr and staying at least six feet apart. You should also read up on the local regulations regarding COVID-19 as these may change on a daily basis. In addition to the risk of catching COVID-19 from traveling to the Netherlands, the State Department also warns of the constant threat of terrorist attacks across Europe, so please keep this risk in mind before deciding to travel. If you are planning to travel to the Netherlands, you do not need a visa as long as you are staying for less than 90 days, but you will need a U.S. passport that is valid for at least six months from the date of your expected departure. Once you actually make it to the ne into the Netherlands, you will likely hear a lot of native speaking Dutch, but almost everyone in the Netherlands is fluent in English, so there is definitely no need to actually know how to speak the language. If you are traveling locally, the most economical way to get around is by the tram, which is sort of like an above ground subway system, or you can also ride, ride a bus. Many individuals also ride bikes here, but their driving patterns are very unique and confusing, so please be careful if you do decide to travel by bicycle. Furthermore, if you need to go a longer distance, you can get almost anywhere in Europe by catching a train from the Netherlands. Although you can you can rent a car, there are a very limited number of parking spots here, so you would likely spend more time parking than driving. The weather in the Netherlands tends to be pretty cool temperatures year-round, with the annual average temperature being around 50 degrees Fahrenheit. In addition, it also rains very frequently, and using public transportation, you will definitely be caught in the rain at some point on a stay in the Netherlands. For this reason, I strongly recommend bringing many layers and an umbrella because being both wet and cold is the per perfect way to ruin any trip. When traveling in the Netherlands, you should not really have to worry about crime because crime rates are extraordinarily low here. While this is the case, you should definitely keep an eye on your wallet and other belongings because the most common crime in the Netherlands is, is pickpocketing. Locals may try to scam tourists, so keep an eye on your money and try to make smart decisions when spending and shopping. While crime is extremely low, I strongly advise reading local laws regarding self-defense because regulations in the Netherlands are very different from the United States. In fact, all weapons, including pepper spray, are illegal to carry in the Netherlands. And if someone does attack you, you are only permitted to defend yourself in a manner that is proportional to the threat.
This means that if someone tries to hit you with a bat or other object, you cannot simply pull out a knife and try and stab them to defend yourself. These types of regulations can be extremely confusing, especially for individuals coming from the U United States who are used to having the right to defend themselves in any way possible. Finally, my last tip to having a successful travel experience in the Netherlands is carrying loose change. Many places will require you to pay to use the bathroom unless you are already a customer, so having a few euros can be a lifesaver in a bathroom emergency situation. The biggest problem in the Netherlands right now is the sinking of many areas and the effect that it is having on the environment and the economy. In many coastal areas and even some inland regions, the land is sinking at a rate of 8 millimeters per year, which is more than three times the natural rate. Approximately one third of the country is already below sea level. This rapid sinking is causing many problems such as frequent flooding, sinkholes, and damage to roads, houses, and foundations to inner city buildings. A 2016 report from the PBL Netherlands Environmental Assessment Agency, which is a research group that directly advises the government, estimated that the total damage to the country's buildings and infrastructure from the sinking, as well as the cost to restore weak foundations, could reach a cost of $22 billion. In regard to housing, a recent report showed that the renovations to homes, including new foundations, can cost upwards of $110,000 per home. So that many so many homeowners in the Netherlands are beginning to worry about these upcoming expenses. Not only is the sinking causing se severe damage to infrastructure, but it is also causing severe damage to the environment. A drop in just one centimeter of peat soil, which is a type of organic soil you typically used for farming, can result in nine tons of carbon dioxide emission per acre. Not only is this issue creating all these economic and environmental problems, but there is no clear guidance from the government on this currently. No government agency in the Netherlands has taken responsibility in helping combat this issue. Some believe that the Ministry of Agriculture, Nature, and Food Quality should take the initiative to help slow down this problem. Global Multinational Firms The Netherlands has two of the top 30 global Fortune 500 companies within their country. They also have one in the top 10. It's called Royal Dutch Shell. Their CEO is Ben Van Buren. It's a public company and they're ranked five on the global 500. They dropped two spots because they lost a lot of revenue due to oil and gas prices dropping. They bring in $352 million in revenue and they have over 83,000 employees and is the Netherlands highest revenue earning business. The next one is Exer Group. Their CEO is John Elkin. They're also a public company. They're ranked 28 in the global Fortune 500. They are an investment group owned by the Italian Agnelli family. They are the leading shareholders in the Fiat Chrysler automobiles, and they, are currently, and they currently just took a controlling share in Italy's largest media outlet, Getty. They have other shares in Juventus football team and the sports car Ferrari. They also bring in almost 163 million in revenue. Culture. The culture in the Netherlands is simple and straightforward. The language spoken there is predominantly Dutch, with the secondary language being Frisian. The Netherlands is one of the most secular countries in Western Europe with only about 39% of the citizens claiming to be re religious, and of those 39%, only 6% attend church on a regular basis. They also have traditional Dutch meals, which consist of a lot of vegetables with little meat. The major influences of their foods are Italian, Chinese, Mandarin, and Indonesian. And traditional Dutch music consists of simple melodies and rhymes that focus on general, emotion, general emotional themes like loneliness, happiness, and sadness. The Dutch people love to play and watch sports. Although the most popular sport is soccer, which is known as football in the Netherlands, there's a large range of sports that are played and watched, such as field hockey, tennis, volleyball, cycling, and golf. The Western culture is known to have influenced the Netherlands into the love for sports. Football, or soccer, as Americans know it, is the most popular competitive sport there. 
It became popular after field hockey was introduced from the Western culture in the early 19th century. Since then, football has become increasingly popular, and in 1904, they became a member of the FIFA. They have since competed in the Olympics and even brought home some medals. Field hockey is the second most popular sport in the Netherlands. The women's team is one of the most successful teams in the World Cup history, while the men's team has also brought home gold medals, along with winning the World Cup three times. Volleyball and basketball are also very popular sports over there, which is ultimately what has allowed them to bring home gold medals from both the Summer and Winter Olympics. While the Netherlands are not typically known for their cuisine, there is one item that is the most famous Dutch food called the new herring. This is raw herring, a fish, which is combined with chopped raw onion and jerkins. The most famous and popular pastry is a stroop waffle. This is a waffle that is made from baked batter and then sliced horizontally. Then, two thin layers of the waffle are filled with sweet and sticky syrup. Another famous food is the Dutch version of french fries, which were invented in Belgium. They're thicker than the fries that we are used to as Americans, and they top them with a lot of things such as mayo, mustard, ketchup, and a lot of other things. The most famous combination of toppings is mayonnaise, raw onion, and peanut sauce. The Dutch also love licorice, which is known as drop, and they actually have the highest consumption of licorice in the world at over two kilograms per person per year. You can find it pretty much anywhere, and the two main kinds are salty and sweet. The Dutch are also very well known for their cheese, as they eat it for breakfast, lunch, dinner, or even as a snack, combined with mustard and a side of wine or beer. Gouda is the most popular cheese in the Netherlands. If you're ever to visit the Netherlands, you will definitely not find yourself bored. One of the fun things that you can do while exploring the Netherlands is to visit the canals of Amsterdam. Amsterdam has their own vibrant canal system, which you can explore by taking a boat tour or water taxi. If you prefer not to get into the water, you could just ri ride your bike and admire the view. You can also visit the Garden of Europe, where there is a riot of color with blooms of every hue. Tulips are the signature flower in this country, and the garden covers over 70 acres of land. While in the Netherlands, you might have to make a stop at the Anne Frank Museum. This museum is the actual former home of Anne Frank, where she hid from the Nazis during the Second War World War. Another amazing museum to visit while in the Netherlands is the Van Gogh Museum, owed to one of the greatest artists to have ever lived. This museum is voted as one of the best art museums in the world, with over one and a half million visitors annually in the largest collection of Van Gogh pieces.